Welcome along guys. Well those fantastic people at Wheels Motorcycles have come through again. We've had the CB1000, we've had the amazing RSV4 1100 factory, now we're going supercharged. <laughs> oh yes, this is the new Kawasaki H2 SX SE Plus. Time for a first ride. This bike only has 20 miles on the clock. It's absolutely brand new. So I've got to go a little bit easy in this first ride. It's a bit like the uh, ZX6 I borrowed from wheels. You know, it's a more or less brand new bike. So we've got to take a look, give it, give it a few miles just to run it in a little bit. So in this first ride, we're not going to go Banzai on this, but uh, there'll be plenty of time for that later on. Don't you worry. But first impressions is the bike is very wide. So very wide between your legs. My legs are splayed out quite a lot. I haven't ridden a bike this wide for quite some time. And there's a lot of bike in front of you. 200 horsepower. 147 newton meters of torque. 147 newton meters of torque. So this bike has some massively impressive figures. <laughs> not just the torque, not just the power, but it's also quite heavy. With it being a, you know, a, a sports tourer, or a hyper tourer, I guess you could call it, it's quite weighty. So it weighs about 256 kilos, if I remember correctly. So it's not light, it's actually 20 or so kilos heavier than the full H2. But I mean, it's been designed to put panniers on the back. You know, you've got, you've got, you've got ability to connect panniers to this. So all of the rear subframes different. There's a lot of different changes to it. It's also got a boost gauge, <laughs> a boost gauge. The bike's extremely comfortable. You're nice and upright. The seat is sort of a gel seat. It's ever so comfortable. The position of the foot pegs are, uh, they're not that low. They're sort of in a sporty-ish position. They're sort of relatively high for a tourer, I would say. But because your legs are sprayed out, it does put your, your legs in a bit of a funny position. I guess it just takes a little bit of getting used to. The bars are unlike the H2, this has rise, slight risers on, so they're nice and comfortable. I'm leaning, for, I'm six foot two, I'm leaning forward a tiny little bit, but there's really not a lot of weight on your wrist. I'd say it's probably the perfect position for touring, because you've not got all of the weight on your ass, you've got a tiny bit on your arms and upper body, so it spreads that weight quite nicely. Now this bike's now got a full IMU, full electronic suspension by KYB, so it's not an electronic suspension provider. It's not someone who's done electronic suspension before. It's the same system, which of course was on the ZX10 SE. So it was, it's been refined from the SE version because obviously that's a sports bike. Let's give it a little gentle push through these corners. Got brand new tires on, so gotta be a bit careful. It's a big bike. Changes direction pretty quickly though, you know, and it's incredibly smooth. The suspension is super, super compliant. This is there's no jarring or nothing. Front brake is absolutely lovely. This actually has those new Stavros brakes, <laughs> the Stalima Brembo calipers, first seen on a Panagali V4, then on the Aprilia RSV4, and it's now on this. So you've got the Stolimas and so much power there. Even hauling a big bike like this up, they, they, they stop it beautifully. God, it feels big around there. It feels big around that tight bend. A good bit of initial shove. It lays down in the corners nicely. I mean, these sorts of smooth tweets, I'm a little bit wary of the tyres. Oh, 
thought I would lay it right down, but I've got to slowly bed the tyres in. Well, the actual bike feels like it will handle this easily. So you could come away, go to the Black Forest, tour down to the Black Forest, and I think still have a lot of fun in those twisties once you get there. Tight bit of road this, <laughs> and it's really no problem for this. I think one of my slight criticisms, I think, is it's so stable, so effortless, you actually don't get a very good perception of the speed you're doing. You actually think you're going slower than you are. It's a proper, proper touring missile this and knowing you've got that braking power to stop if you need to in an emergency that's a real confidence booster even when you you can even change direction when you're braking you can brake quite hard it must be the electronic suspension the bike doesn't want to stand up when you're braking it's still quite happy to to lay down why are you on that front brake? That could be just one of the magical benefits of this electronic suspension where it you know adjusts the preload front to back, increases the preload when you're on the brakes to stop it diving so much. You can hear that because <laughs> it's supercharged, it, once that boost pressure builds and you shut the throttle, that pressure is released via the little dump valve or butterfly valve. And the sound of that pressure being released is a lovely little You can't hear it very well because I haven't had the boost pressure right up yet but that is one of the fantastic things about a turbo or supercharged bike, the noises. Alright, I'm going to pull over, give you a little walk around. Let's go in the pub, give you a walk around the bike. The White Horse. So there it is. It's certainly a fine looking machine. You can see a lot of styling cues from the, the, the real H2. The fairing is a very, very similar design to, to, the, to the real H2. I mean, the front end is almost identical. It looks great. I mean, it's, it's certainly got road presence, hasn't it? <laughs> it's absolutely huge supercharger it's also got a center stand for practicality which is obviously probably one of the reasons it's a bit heavier than a normal h2 as well single-sided swinging arm the exact same wheels the h2 has exactly the same the back light and the whole back of the bike is different to the h2 because obviously you can take a pillion on this there's no pillion on the on the real h2 so you've got all of your pannier fixing uh do breathe it's also got lean angle turning cornering lights so as the bike turn corners it's like the gt super gt these lights come on to shine in the road where, where the bike's tipped up we where, where the lights are coming off of the road i'll try and take it out in the dark and see if i can show you that working for a tourer they don't come much better looking than this i know i know the h2 looks always some people hate the look of it i think it's ugly i think it's incredibly cool looking it's mean it's not beautiful it's mean angry and and got a real presence and i love it look at that now that see that in your mirror you know it means business <laughs> love it before we go let me just show you the uh the dash oh yeah so i love it analog rev counter with the tft your lean angle sensor your throttle amount of throttle you're giving it. Does it have a brake one? No, just throttle. And then this here, that BST is your boost gauge, which goes up and down. <laughs> you can toggle through the modes and you've got your maximum lean angle, 30 degrees, 34 degrees. That's not too bad so I'm embedding the tires in. Now the information on the amount of miles, 37 miles, that's all the bike's done. And a trip and back to your lean again. And there's all sorts of options. You can also connect your phone to the bike. 
which I'll show you later on. It's got Bluetooth on here, you can connect your phone and then you can put information. This is why I've put my Ultimate Add-ons phone mount on the bike because you can then have information like your fuel gauge, other information showing on your phone. So you've got a TFT there and also, and also a TFT on your phone with all the other information on. So And also navigation and stuff as well. Switch gear is really nice, a bit busy. You've got cruise control here, you've got sort of the menus up and down, the preload adjustment. Because it's electronic suspension, it's like the Super Duke, so if you press the, 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 the preload button, that should, if I do it right, there you go. So one person with luggage, two people with luggage, well in my way, I might as well leave it as two people with luggage, might be about right then. It's a lovely bit of kit. Let's get back on. Hmm? Is it the H2? It's fucking insane, don't they? Yeah, they're mental, don't they? Oh, <laughs> effortlessly quick. Absolutely effortless. I think this is going to be a bike a bit like the RSV4. It could get you into a lot of trouble without you even realising you're in trouble. A few more miles on those tyres. Oh, the brakes are amazing. Really gives you confidence to push on. This is just in road mode and it's still, this road's a bumpy bit of road. That suspension is just dealing with it. It's a, it's a missile. <laughs> I've not even opened it up yet and I can tell it, it's going to be an absolute missile. What's the maximum lean angle now? After that. Ooh, still 34, 30 degrees. 34 degrees to the left, 30 degrees to the right. Got a bit more work to do. Let's see if we can get that to 40 by the time I give it back. <laughs> Manoeuvring it round. It's heavy. It's it's a bit of a bit of a prospect, but you get a little bit nervous when you have to go slow and manoeuvre it. I guess it's fine once you're used to that weight, but it's a little bit nerve-wracking trying to just manoeuvre it around a little tight bits like that, especially on gravel. So this is now sport. You can feel that throttle. It's a bit more aggressive. The suspension has tightened up, it's a bit more bouncy. A bit harsher. Let's put it around this little bumpy section of road here. Let's see how it feels. He loves it. It's a little bit snatchy in the sport mode. Very a bit a bit uh, a bit aggressive on and off the throttle. Mountains of power, absolute mountains. Those brakes are just so good. Yeah, very composed. I think the, the, the standout features for me so far are the brakes and that suspension. Absolutely incredible. That's what's standing out to me as, as being exceptional at the moment. On the motorway, 80 miles an hour. To coin a phrase, I'm in a bubble of calm. <laughs> it's absolutely lovely. I've got, you know, it's just so still the air here. The screen isn't particularly high. I guess you could get a double screen and have it even higher, but the wind is hitting my helmet. A, a, well, well, the wind's up here somewhere actually. It's miles away. Like because of that, that nose is so pointed and so long. It's actually diverting that air over my head very well indeed yeah it'll make an absolute superb autobahn blaster as you would imagine i mean this a lot of this bike is designed for this isn't it the open road just to sit at high speed and i can tell it, it would do that extremely well <laughs> i love that <laughs> oh i love a supercharger why hasn't every bike got a supercharger? So all of this loveliness, <laughs> how much is that going to cost you? That is the uh, that is the the, the bugbear 
this is an expensive bit of kit. This bike costs 21 and a half thousand pounds in this spec. With this electronic suspension, the new revisions, £21,500. It's a pricey bike, it's the same price as the RSV4 RF. You could argue, you know, you get a lot more for your money with this. It's not just a pocket rocket, you can tour on this. It seems like it's pretty capable around the twisties. I actually did a track day a couple of months ago, or six weeks ago, on the GSXR. And there was a guy here with on the track day with one of these. Not this model, but last year's model. And he was hustling that bike around. Even on track, he was going quick. It must have been quite hard work, but I was really impressed with the, the track prowess of this bike. So I know it does handle. In the right hand, this can still handle. So I'm going to be interested to get those the next ride, those tyres will be fully bedded in. We'll have done a heat cycle through them. I can lay it down, we can go through the twisties and we can see what it's actually like to be used as a proper sports tourer. Well there we go guys, first ride done, I'm impressed with it. It's, a, it's, it's an incredible bit of kit. I'll let you know how I get on with it, I'll bring you a couple more videos on this. I'll bring you a test going for a bit of a tour, a bit of a trip down to Weymouth you know, for the day on some faster roads, some tighter roads, some twisty roads, see what it's like. We'll also go out and do my sort of final sum up of the bike once I've been on it for a couple of weeks. To let you know what I think of it, what's it like to live with? Well there we go, massive thanks to channel sponsor Wheels Motorcycles for delivering me down another bike to ride. This one's a bit special, it's another pricey expensive bike they've trusted me with, so really appreciative. If you want to, if you're thinking of a H2, wheels are actually a super, a Kawasaki supercharged centre, so they do all of the full fat H2s, the H2Rs, and also of course the H2SXs like this. If you want to ride this bike, it should be back with them, probably by the time you see this video. So go down, give them a ring, book a test ride and see what you think to this bike. But from a first ride I've been very impressed. I will catch you next time on the big old H2. See you later guys. This is power level one, which is full power. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, alright. Never mind get beat up. Give me this any day of the week. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh.